Hi, consumer surplus. Consumer surplus is a, a pretty straightforward concept in economics. Consumer surplus is said to exist when there is a difference between the price a consumer has to pay and the price they were prepared to pay. You might be prepared to pay $200 for a, a ticket to a, a big sports match that you want to watch, but if the ticket only costs $120, you've got $80 of consumer surplus. On a diagram where we have a demand curve, and a supply curve, we know that the equilibrium price will be at P1, the quantity Q1 is being sold. People that are not prepared to pay P1 simply don't buy the product. But some people were prepared to pay more than P1. We know that because even at higher prices there was some demand. And yet they don't have to pay that higher price, they, 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 uh, they only have to pay P1. So, for a person who was prepared to pay, let's call this P2, they only have to pay P1, they have a consumer surplus of this much. Someone was only prepared to pay a very slightly higher price than P1, and they have a small piece of consumer surplus. Someone was only prepared to P1 and pay P1 and not more than that. They have no consumer surplus. But the, the, the summation, summing all of, putting together all of these individual consumer surpluses, gives us this area which represents the entire consumer surplus in this, in this uh, case. And put simply, consumer surplus will be an area on the diagram bordered by the demand curve, the price axis, and the price level. That's the demand curve, the price axis, and the price level. That area is consumer surplus. Of course, it's consumer surplus that monopolists try and appropriate when they undertake price discrimination. Uh, because they see that as lost profit. Now, consumer surplus can change. If there's a rise in the cost of production and the supply curve shifts up to S2, the new equilibrium price will be this price, let's call it P2, and you can see that the consumer surplus has shrunk to this area. The higher price has, has led some consumers who are only prepared to pay prices at this, in this range to, to, to leave the market. They're not going to buy this product. All consumers will see that their consumer surplus has fallen. Even the person who's prepared to pay a very high price now only has this much consumer surplus. And the entire area of consumer surplus has fallen to this area. It has fallen by this area. This area represents the fall in consumer surplus. Of course, had costs of production fallen and the S-curve had shifted outwards, we would have had a bigger consumer surplus. So the size of the consumer surplus will change when there is a shift in the, in the S-curve against the demand curve. If the demand curve had shifted, and now I'm working with this consumer surplus and S2, if demand for the, for the good, um, let's say, fell to D2, then this would be the new equilibrium price, and this would represent the new consumer surplus. But it's always that area bordered by the demand curve, the price axis, and the price level. Always that area. That's consumer service.